Welcome, I'm Ike, and this is Draw Process. I'm going to draw a comic book page. You'll see the thumbnails, pencils, inks, and, and the finished page at the end. Uh, and during that time, I process about where I'm at with my journey, what I'm thinking about uh, in becoming the practice of my art, in hopes that it helps you with your own journey. Uh, so it's very string of consciousness, uh, unscripted uh, talk that I do over the video. And hopefully you find that helpful. I have been thinking about uh, thankfulness and being gracious towards yourself, humble. I don't know, that's where my thoughts have been. Um, thankful to be able to have any time at all to apply to creating thankful for my abilities uh, not jaded or upset uh, or feeling entitled that I that I deserve more recognition uh, not uh, um weighed down and bothered by how difficult it is to make a living in art uh, or as an artist. Um, bothered by how you have to compromise your vision to just produce art for some corporate system or whatever. There's a lot of things that, that can bother us and weigh us down. Um, and just feeling thankful for any amount of time that we have and for the abilities we have and, uh, for, especially when it, the ability to produce, like actually put pencil to paper, uh, actually produce art, um, engage in this practice. So I, I hopefully have some several decades ahead of me of producing thousands of days that I, I could use and how do I want to use those days? Like instead of thinking of it, like like the, you know, my art journey and my life is like climbing this mountain towards these goals and I'm just trying to get up the path. Like, how far can I get, you know, if I work every day, I work X amount of time, I do X, you know, practices, then in 10 years time, I'll get here. And then another 10 here. And like, I've got to achieve and get there. It's, it's not thinking like that. Uh, it's more, I'm, I've got this one life and I've got these days to spend. And how do I want to be, uh, in those days? I do want to create, you know, art. I do have a goal, but the focus is less on that achieving and getting up the mountain and more. What is the daily practice? What am I being and practicing being? Am I thankful? Am I feeling grateful? Uh, is there, is there fun in my art? Is there discovery, exploration, and curiosity in my art? Am I being curious, right? Am I being uh, fun um, and thankful? And if I practice being certain ways over time, and I, and I do that every day, then I'm going to become more and more that. And uh, the art's going to improve either way. Like, you, you can spend the next 10 years slaving away, like torturing yourself to do your art. Or you can do it uh, in a fun way. But as long as you are putting time in doing it, um, then, you know, you can improve either way. Um, 
which is a little bit of like, I don't know, you could say trust in the process or believing in yourself that, that if you do what feels right for you with your art, with your practice, you go your path, you listen to what feels good, that it will lead to success. So maybe this goes back to self-doubt. Is uh, it, It's hard to believe in ourselves. Um, we are living in a world where you are presented with the right way to do things. Like you're, you have the examples around you of what's currently successful or um, popular is a better word. What's currently popular and praised in our culture. And so you look at that and you, you get the idea of what, what's necessary um, of you, like what you should uh, do and how you should approach your art and what it should look like. Um, and then uh, the, the inclination you might have to be your own practice of your art and listen to your own, you know, inner voice or whatever. Um, it becomes very difficult because like it, it gets drowned out and it's just really hard to trust it that like, am I really going to go my own path? Um, and sometimes, I mean, I, I believe in, in following, uh, mentors following the teachers, the experts, you know, choosing a challenge in life and tackling it and working hard to become that, you know, like sticking to one school of art or whatever and working to become that and competing with others in that realm. Like there is growth possible and, and, and good things you can do there, but for me, the art I care about and the kind of person I want to be as well uh, is the kind that goes beyond a current school. So there comes a point where someone that's very diligent and disciplined with what they're supposed to do within a certain school or way of thinking, where they learn to say no, they learn to refuse like to to do it that way like to 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 kind of hate it to get sick of to see the flaws in their master's way right um and you're, you're especially good at that if you're a servant of the master you can see the master's flaws uh their blind spots so over time you you really start to see um the limitations and you can kind of get sick of it and then, you know, get sick of yourself, get sick of all the work you do that looks like that. You're just sick of it. And some, you know, back to like our culture, some people will say, Oh, don't like, don't be, don't feel that way. Like you shouldn't, if you're feeling sick of your work, sick of yourself, then there's something wrong with you. There's a mental health problem. There's a, a self image problem. You need to reframe this or whatever. But I find it is just a natural process of moving from one thing to another. For many people, they're not able to just, you know, uh, have fun and explore and find a new path or listen to that inner voice and make their own way. They have to work diligently at what they're told to do. They have to rebel against it at some point which includes rebelling against and being sick of your own self and how you determined your value and worth in that system. So, you, you know, there's some loathing involved. Uh, and then, then it becomes possible to have fun and listen to yourself, like to, to kind of move on to a, another, another way. Um, after you kind of tear down the idols as another metaphor. 
Um, and, and I think it's an ongoing process. Like even, even if you're really counter cultural and, uh, have gone through it before in different areas of your life or different art, uh, things like you're, it's a constant process, um, where you start to get sick of what you're doing. You want to move on. You want to express something beyond it. Um, you don't know how, uh, and you're incapable of, of doing it. Um, and that's frustrating. You're not because you're too limited with what you were clinging to. The way you saw things before is too limited. You got to tear it down and then kind of empty yourself. And then it's possible to, to be playful with it and, um, and create, uh, something new, uh, after that process of tearing it down. Um, so yeah, and it's a constant process because then you get to that next level and then eventually you want to tear that down and get sick of that and, and find something new. And uh, if you want to develop quickly in your art, then I think you would get really good at this process. You would get where you can very quickly have quick turnaround on these things. Um, if you go back to page number one of this comic that I started in November, because I do one per week, I can't believe this is page 31 already, which means we're over half a year in uh, to doing this. I can't, I can't believe I've stuck with it that long, like, or that it's been that long since I started. Um, but uh, if you go back, like, it does look different than these pages look. Um, and it's not... It's partly reflection, but it's, I mean, it's not by accident. Uh, I can partly reflect on the pages, like, as I go and then and reflect on what I'm doing and go, hmm, I want to intentionally, you know, change, but, but some of it's accidental, but, but there is a, uh, yeah, a boredom and a sickness I get of what I'm doing. And I'm like, mm, I gotta, I gotta push this a little further. And I don't even know if this is a good direction to go, but I'm going to go. Um, and, and I, I could short circuit that process. I could say, you know what, like this is this, I'm, I'm, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, and when I'm trying to create another way uh, and I could go back to listening to what someone else tells me to do. Um, and that includes studying anatomy that includes like getting back like if you if heavily focused on on study and following methods of what experts are saying you do um you can do some study obviously but but it's the way you do it and uh and i and i could go back to that when i feel a little lost and and just start to to put all my energy and and work into that and um, but that is a, that is a sort of giving up on like getting so uncomfortable, you know, with the uncertainty of where you're at, that you're going to run back, uh, to your former, uh, master, right? Like, so, uh, how much uncertainty you can, uh, you can manage, uh, you, uh, stomach is, uh, is also something that uh, distinguishes uh, an artist from another and, and how quickly they can develop uh, their own voice. I don't know. I'm just thinking these things through out loud. So hopefully it's interesting to you uh, when you think about uh, what motivates you, how you want to be uh, in your practice, where, you know, like, where are you listening to what feels right to you? Where are you, the discomfort of the process has you retreating or, uh, 
or where is it a a, dis, a good thing like you're you're maintaining certain disciplines to better yourself uh toward, you know there's paying attention to how it feels and the reasons you're doing things uh is is going to be important to your development so um Yeah, I think I've said this before, but like, yeah, the reasons you do things like uh, if you're drawing in a sketchbook uh, be, and you know you're going to be sharing it on social media uh, or, or that there's an, you have some feeling that you might want to show this off, uh, then that's going to influence how you make your lines. And, and maybe, you know, yeah, I've, I mentioned it last week, I think. Um, it's okay, like to uh, to not have everything uh, fit a mold and be for a certain presentation purpose. Um, and if you can, yeah, how much how much of that discomfort can you handle to uh, to really engage in a unique practice and like move forward. Um. But this is all nice flowery language, but on some level, I do feel it's just a matter of like, I'm kind of intellectualizing this whole, this whole thing. And there are other ways to do it. Like you could just sitting down on a regular basis and producing something, you know, drawing, uh, drawing a comic, if that's what you want to do, just sitting down and doing that regularly is going to yield results like that, you know, just putting in the work, putting in the hours. And you can kind of trust that process too. that. And whether it's, you know, I'm studying from a sketch, uh, from, from a drawing book or other people's work, uh, or, or whatever you're doing, at least you're doing something. And, uh, yeah, regardless of how you intellectualize about it, there's probably going to be improvement uh, that that you find. Um, that does bring up something I I think about, like the idea of a tortured artist, starving artist. Um, th- like self-destructive artist that uh can make great art but can't sustain like their life um not i don't mean like make enough money to live but they uh can't um like practice on a regular basis or like keep keep themselves alive keep themselves sane um not destroy their health um, or be yeah too much of a, a drug addict or whatever uh, to be able to to function and, and keep producing. Um, and for me, and maybe it's because I'm a father and I care about other things than just art, it is very important to me that I stay very stable and that I practice my art in in, a, in, in that sustainable, healthy way. Um, but I think it's also a misunderstanding when we think of artists uh, as like that maybe there's something uh, natural to the artist or great in the artist that they that they uh, are so self-destructive. Um, I think that I think of it more like this, that there are people that are like countercultural uh creative even with like their identity um very sensitive like a child contemplating you know death and the suffering of other people like more than other children or very sensitive to sound and t- uh, sensations um like there's there are i don't know like less common types of people that 
have these creative or sensitive traits or just strong traits in one area versus other people. And uh, regardless of how healthy their environment is with their parents, with their, you know, their schooling environment, their culture, uh, they're going to have a hard time. And sometimes they might get into like drug addiction or whatever. So thinking of this, you know, this, this tortured artist, they might be a wreck and volatile, but I don't think that that's inherent to who they are. It's more that they're, there's just so much, so many dangers in their way, like so, so much pain and so much risk and so much that's fragile. Uh, there's definitely the risk taking, not just in like, you know, substance use or something, but in the crea- in the sense of being creative, willing to consider and try uh, ideas that other people wouldn't. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, uh, I think that's a great quality to have. Like I, I, uh, maybe we are too worried about if we're going to be failures or not. Um, like in our art, like ultimately, because, um, to me, the, the greatest people, the greatest things are most likely to fail. You know, when you think of that highly sensitive person, they have it harder and they're more likely to fail. Um, but I still like really appreciate and value that, uh, and don't see the failure as a reflection on, on their worth. And maybe that's something I I consider for myself that like, if I fail, uh, it's not a reflection on my worth. It's, it's the, the cost of, of being me. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's just chance taking to live and, uh, and it's harder for some people and, and it doesn't mean that, that I'm a failure. So, uh, and yeah, I think to, yeah, to be a great artist, it, it helps if you're, you know, are a more sensitive, fragile, creative, uh, wounded person. Um, and I don't just like by wounded, I don't mean like you had traumatic experiences. I think for highly sensitive people, like, uh, just life itself can, there's plenty that can, can be traumatic. Um, so, uh, Yeah, so I don't think there's anything noble or, or, or good about the, uh, the being self-destructive. Um, I don't think that it leads to better art. I think it's just the kind of people that, that make great art um, are uh, uh, just at risk. Uh, they're just uh, f- fragile in that way. Um, easily hurt uh, so and, and yeah and that's like that's just so it's a separate thing um, yeah so I mean I do want to be like a sensitive person and feel deeply and and, and uh, be creative but um, but if I can I, I, you know I, I, I don't want it to uh I I don't want to be destroyed by that. So I don't know what that means exactly. Just keeping, keeping grounded, keeping a daily practice, having things in my life, like my children, where I have responsibilities, I have things to do, uh, finding ways to love life. Um, I mean, not being hard on yourself. I mean, that, that helps in itself. Uh, To not to not push you uh, too much into danger. Yeah. So yeah, over half a way, uh, half a year in on this, and how long is it? Uh, eight years or so. Seriously, making comics, 
and maybe 10 years if you counted a few years of playing around with the idea, doing some uh, rough comics or trying to figure out some stories. Maybe it was more like nine or 10 years that I've been doing this. So not that long. I mean, I drew as a kid. I, I got in, I did some student film work and I've done a lot of stuff that maybe relates, but, uh, but my real journey is just like eight to 10 years in. So I have not been doing it that long. And, and I do remember, you know, one, two, three years in, I, you know, I expected greater success. Uh, I thought I had a lot of experience, maybe, you know, just that naivety of a beginner. And now that I've reached like a much higher level, a much higher level of experience and skill, um, I realize just how inexperienced I am that like, I am more of a beginner now than I've ever been in my mind, like in my awareness and that I'm just at the start of this journey. I, I, I think, I feel like I've just now qualified to consider myself starting the journey and that the rest of it was adolescence, youthfulness, naivety, like, uh, striving, dreaming, attempting, uh, up until recently when, uh, it, it was not, uh, it wasn't mature. Uh, and, and even like, you know, entering into the start of, of the journey. So, uh, and I, I think that applies to other things in life. Like I know jujitsu is like that, like, and, um, because I, I, I did that for a few years and uh, it takes a long time to become like a black belt um, to to get to get good and and you can get really good really quick sometimes some people but it doesn't matter like uh, you still are not a black belt no matter even if you can tap out a black belt uh, you are not and uh and then there's this there's this you you sort of reach a threshold where you're like okay i'm and maybe i i i'm not saying you have to be a black belt to reach this threshold maybe it happens at purple or something but you reach a threshold where uh you understand that you are really just just now starting and initiated into this practice this way of being uh that's going to be lifelong and you're kind of at the beginning of it. Um, and yeah, that's where I feel I am with, with comics. So I'm at the beginning. Um, I do appreciate it. You know, everyone that, that, uh, that praises me or, or thinks I'm doing great work or looks up to me as more expert. Like maybe I am a little further up the road, but like, I don't know if you, if it even helps to know this, but like, if you're just starting, like you, you haven't even started yet. <laughs> like, uh, if you think I'm ahead of you, uh, once you get here, you'll realize that you're only just starting. Um, and yeah, back to like how it's the greater, more rare things so rarely succeed, so rarely make it like, to to spend decades making comics is nearly impossible or or doing any art it's nearly impossible to dedicate yourself in that way um there's so many opportunities to fall off the tracks like to to quit and anyone that sticks with it i i'm you know i praise that um, yeah, I mean like that, I even, I care about that more than how the art looks is like, when I look at someone's work, it's like, is this, you know, if you see the, uh, that understanding, that commitment to the journey, that understanding, uh, of being, being a beginner of, uh, commitment to the path, the journey, uh, I appreciate that in someone almost more than the level of their work. Uh, same thing in jujitsu. Like someone's just 
their mindset, their daily practice and commitment and um, the way they see things like the the amount of experience they have in itself, that's more valuable than like the sickest move or tournament that they, uh, that they can win. Like that's more interesting, uh, or celebrated to me. Um, and it's that way with the art too. Um, that's what I celebrate in other artists a lot. And in the new artists too. I mean, uh, my new artists that are uh, starting out and trying to start this journey. And uh, I celebrate that, of course. I want, I want more people to, to start the journey, knowing that a lot of them will quit and fall off uh, the horse. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, what else are you going to do? you gotta, you got to have something to do something to uh, dedicate yourself to and to kind of uh, commit yourself to, to develop in some way. And this is one option. There was actually a time when I was doing jujitsu and I, I started comics too and I, I felt like I had a choice to make. Uh, now, that I believe it's possible to make comics and, uh, and do jujitsu, obviously, but... For me, I was I had other things like being a father. I had a lot going on. So uh, for me, it, it was feeling like I had a choice to make. Uh, and I chose comic books. So, uh, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, that's something too, is the, the idea that uh, you do have to choose. You know, like it's, it's fun to see someone that, you know, maybe it goes back to like knowing I'm at the beginning of my journey as like a beginner might just be like, I'm going to try out making a comic. And it's like, that's cool. But uh, just trying it out is not the same thing uh, as really choosing it as a path and a journey for yourself. Like you're just trying it out one time. You might not really be committed to the to the journey. Uh, not really initiated yet. So find people that are trying to be on that journey and trying to become initiated into that. Find people like that. Um, you're going to probably find much more positivity and encouragement and uh, just like much better relationships if, if you can find that as opposed to... Um, a lot of a lot else that's out there um, but today I thought I would talk about just ideas like this the whole time and not even comment about what you see on the screen but it's over now there's there's everything you see the finished page uh, and you can read that at the website and um, you know you saw my penciling process my inking process uh, and there's really nothing I needed to say this week uh, I find that I typically start out a video with 10 minutes of just talking about what I did on that page. And by then, uh, someone might click off the video and not even know that I talk about this mindfulness type stuff. Um, so I thought I'll start with the mindfulness stuff and I got caught up in it and, uh, used the whole, the whole, uh, 30, three minutes here. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.